You can tell a lot about a person by where they choose to sit. In parties, at family dinners, here in the sanctuary at church, at meetings. You can tell a lot about a, a person, about what they think about themselves, about what they think about others. Based on where someone chooses to sit, you can venture to guess what their sense of entitlement is, or their sense of propriety, or if they have a gift for hospitality. You can venture to guess those whose company they most enjoy, and perhaps those whom they would rather not sit by. You can tell a lot about someone by where they choose to sit. Recently, I went to a party, a gathering of uh, ELCA pastors here in Cincinnati and their spouses. Uh, we went to a pastor's home, and uh, we were invited there because we were hearing about a way that churches here in Southern Ohio can invest in small congregations over the next three years. So we went to hear about this exciting new program. Uh, and after hors d'oeuvres, then uh, we were to move into the living room for the presentation. And as we moved into the living room, it was immediately apparent that there weren't going to be enough chairs for everyone who was there at the party. So some of the younger members in the crowd sort of milled around in the back, waiting for the, the el more elder members of the group to take spots in the chairs. Um, and then once they were seated, then they took chairs of, the, of their own or stayed standing. It was very amusing to see those who rushed into the room to take the lazy boy chair. <laughs> but what was most interesting was where the bishop chose to, sat, chose to sit. Bishop Suzanne Dillahunt, the bishop of Southern Ohio in our denomination, the ELCA, she walked into the room and then she sat in the back corner on the floor next to a dog kennel. Now, some of us felt awkward about this, so someone made a joke, but then the presentation started. She chose the lowest place in the room, and I'm pleased to tell you that she was invited to move up higher. I'm pleased because it was my tailor who did so. And Taylor brought a, a chair from the kitchen for, uh, for the bishop to sit in. Now, maybe the bishop and I were the only ones who noticed Taylor's hospitality but I guarantee you that everyone noticed which seat the bishop first chose to sit in. And I thought, now that is a leader worth imitating. The places that we set, the seats that we choose, the chairs that we offer or deny others say a lot about us. And unfortunately for us, we don't often look that good. Today, Jesus' instruction to invite not our friends or our relatives, not to invite our family, not to invite our wealthy neighbors or those who can repay us, but instead to invite to our parties the poor, the outcast, those who can do nothing for us. It convicts us, because which of us have taken him literally? Today, Jesus confronts us with all those whom we have despised and judged and wished that they had to sit in shame. Today, Jesus recalls, makes us recall, not only the times that we have ignored others and their suffering, but that all the times that we have actually caused others suffering. Today, Jesus make, reminds us of all of the times that we have denied a place at the table to someone who we look down on, or how many times we have put ourselves forward because we are never content with what we have. The seats we take, the places we set, and the chairs we offer or deny others say a lot about us, and unfortunately, we don't often look that good. If God judged us alone on the seats that we take, the places that we set, and the seats that we off either deny or offer others, we would all be found short of Jesus' commands and God's glory. 
But thanks be to God for us. Because instead, God has chosen to judge us by the one who sits at his right hand, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is sent to us to prove and show us God's love and to make us righteous. Where God sits says a lot about who God is. And God sits in Jesus Christ on the judgment seat. And the one who sits on the judgment seat before whom we will all be accountable for what we have done in this life is the one who sat by tax collectors and sinners, the one who kneeled before his disciples and washed their feet. Now, we often make the mistake of thinking that the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament are different. But today, Hebrews 13 reminds us that Christ and his mercy are the same yesterday and today and forever. And God's mercy is just as consistent. Let me tell you about where the Old Testament says God sits. God's mercy is especially apparent in the architecture of the, of the temple, especially in the Ark of the Covenant. Now remember that the Ark of the Covenant is the chest which carried the law, the Ten Commandments, God's covenant with all the people Israel, that he would be their God and they would be his people and they would follow his law. So in this Ark of the Covenant kept, was kept the Ten Commandments and the lid of the Ark of the Covenant on top, there were two gold angels facing each other. And in the center of these cherubim, that space in between them was called the mercy seat the place where atonement took place, the place where God met God's people, the place where God poured out his mercy. For once a year, on the Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur, the high priest would enter the tabernacle first, the tent of meeting, and then the temple, where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. And on that Day of Atonement would sprinkle blood from a bull on the mercy seat, and all of his sins and the sins of the whole nation would be cleansed and they would be forgiven. Now, God did not give this ritual to people because God is bloodthirsty. God does not need blood for forgiveness. God can do it with God's word. But instead, God gives this ritual because we as human beings are tangible creatures. We need to experience God's mercy. We need to touch and hear and taste and see it to see his presence in order to trust forgiveness. And so God gives this ritual to the people Israel. And this mercy seat is the place where God promises to sit, to dwell, to meet his people, and to pour out mercy. Well, God continues that in Jesus Christ. That same mercy is given in Jesus. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews calls Jesus the high priest who makes atonement for all people, all the world. That Jesus Christ is the one in whom God pours out mercy, the one who meets us. That Jesus Christ is the mercy seat. You can tell a lot about God by where he sits. The mercy seat, Jesus Christ, and now in you. For 1 Corinthians 3.16, God promises that now you are the temple. You are the Holy of Holies, the temple in whom God is pleased to dwell by the Holy Spirit. And so since Jesus has taken seat in you, now you are never without God. As he promises again in Hebrews today, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Jesus Christ is the reason that you do not need to be afraid about tomorrow. Jesus Christ is the reason that you do not need to be afraid about what others can do to you. Jesus Christ is the reason you do not need to fear the future and Jesus is the reason you do not even need to fear death because Christ's mercy for you is the same yesterday and today and always. Would you like to leave fear behind? Would you like to stop being afraid? Would you like to stop having sleepless nights? Well then today I encourage you to take Hebrews 13.6 as your new mantra. Carol read it for us today. The Lord is my helper. What have I to fear? I will not be afraid. What can people do to me? 
Oh, they can do a lot. They can take away your job. They can take away your home. They can take away your family and yes, even your life. But Christ has already won the victory for you ultimately. And in this life, you already have complete freedom. That ultimately, all things have already been won for you. And now that God has chosen to take his seat in you, you can be a mercy seat. You can be the ones through whom others meet God. You can be the ones through whom others experience God's mercy. Or you can sit in judgment and you can look down on others. And you can seek to shame them and put them in the place that you think they deserve. Either way, the world will tell a lot about God by, where, by the seats that you take, by the places you set, by the chairs you either offer or deny. Today, Jesus is calling us and saying to us that in our words and in our actions, in our thoughts even, it's time we all move up to a higher and better place. Today, Jesus is calling you in joy and complete freedom to be his mercy seat for the world, to offer his mercy freely. God is calling you to offer the mercy to those who are poor, to those who are poor in spirit, to those who are poor in character, to those who are poor in judgment, to those who have wronged you and will never be able to repay you. Today, Jesus invites you to say, friend, move up a little bit higher to everyone. Jesus invites you, and every time you can, to give up the seat that you have for others and thereby say, friend, move up a higher to a better place. Jesus invites you to say to those who have wronged you, who have cut you out or cut you down, friend, move up a little higher to a better place. Jesus invites you to say, friend, move up a little higher to a better place to those who are friendless. Jesus invites you to say, friend, move up higher to a better place, to those who have no one, to the poor, and that by offering your seat, by sharing what you have, you, as Jesus Christ, will say, friend, move up higher to a better place. And if you do this, they will know God's mercy. If you do this, you will be God's mercy seat, the place where people meet God, the one who pours out mercy on all. Now, they may not notice. They may not be able to repay you, and in fact, they may reject you and persecute you and hurt you. But you will be paid at the resurrection of the righteous, and you are righteous, beloved, because Jesus Christ has declared you so. When you die, and you stand before Almighty God, the judgment, and at your judgment, you will meet God. You will come face to face with Jesus Christ, the mercy seat, and he will say to you on that day the same thing that he says to you today, yesterday, today, and forever. The same thing he says to you at this table. Friend, move up higher to a better place.